Hi everyone, welcome back to e-commerce success by Ad360. Today we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to review several different websites in today's video. We're not going to go in depth about each website, but we're going to go only about one uh, single aspect uh, and give one or two tips to each website. What we'll do is if any of the business owners are watching this video, if you'd like me to do in-depth review in a separate video or during the next live on the channel, please comment below. Tell me if you'd like to get that. I can do an in-depth review and talk some more about the, the general uh, website, any technical issue I can see, uh, all things SEO, um, the marketing strategy, product choice, uh, pricing strategy, and all things marketing and advertising e-commerce in general. I'd be happy to do so. Just tell me in the comments if you'd like to get more advice. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe to the channel. All these little actions tell YouTube that you get value out of these videos and it helps us uh, grow the channel, make sure more people see these videos so that we can help more people become happy, successful and productive. This video is brought to you by Ad360. Ad360 is the easiest way to increase your sales by managing all your ads in one place, including retargeting all over the web and mobile apps and managing in the same place as well Google Ads and Facebook Ads. And we also have a ton of other features. If you'd like to know more, please watch until the end. Okay, let's jump into today's content. So we're going to review a few websites uh, quickly. Now, most of these websites are dropshipping websites which is not something I'm going to explain in details today. I might make a separate video on that. Tell me in the comments below if you'd like me to make a, a dedicated dropshipping video to explain what it is, how it works, and if it's still worth it or not in 2022. The bottom line is dropshipping is just a technique and you can make a good dropshipping website or bad dropshipping website. Uh, dropshipping doesn't equal bad quality or a uh, um, website that doesn't work. You can be hugely successful, but you can also fail miserably. So today we're going to review each website uh, individually and discuss the individual characteristics. So let's start with this one uh, on the review my Shopify. So they're saying, first let's look at the numbers. They're saying they're doing something wrong. Before we look at the website, which is this one, uh, let's uh, review the numbers quickly. So they're saying they have 3,000 store sessions, about 30 add to carts, so that's 1%, and then five orders, which is a 1.6, so about you know, 15, 17% of um, these add to carts. Um, so it's true these numbers are below average, so you could do a lot better. They're not atrocious, so I think by making a few changes, you can make things a lot better. Now you're mentioning people making six, seven figures in 30, 90 days. Um, I'm not sure if that's still that easy to do. Maybe it was a few years ago. It's definitely possible if you do everything right. But if you're just getting started, this is your first website, I would shoot for something more realistic. It's going to help you manage your expectations, know how to progress step by step. But okay, so the first step is getting people on your website, which you're doing already, and making sure that people actually convert. So you did get five orders, which is uh, just, you know, on average, we, we should say if a website is working well, you should get something like 2% conversion rate on average. Now, when you get started, getting 1% is not unusual and you have to work your way up to 2% or better if you're doing really well. So if you had a 1% conversion rate, you should be getting 30 orders. So about six times more. Um, okay, so that's your below average. But the uh, add to cart to order rate is not necessarily that bad, it's not great, but the average uh, cart abandon rate is 75%. So three people out of four abandon their carts. So it's not that bad. You should have something closer to eight orders. But the biggest problem is the add to cart rate. So you have about 1% add to cart, whereas you should be getting something like 4 to 8%. So you, you're losing out a ton on the add to cart, meaning that people are not adding products to your cart for some reason, or that um, you're not bringing the right people on your website. So firstly, looking at the website, um, 
you know, it's not very wrong how to phrase that. You're doing a few things right. Okay, that's a better way to say it. You're doing a few things right. Like it's very visual. I like it. The product do give a sense of somewhat quality products. Like all these images look like the you know good products, interesting products. These look okay. They look great. Um, there's no like bad vibe coming from any of this. Uh, you you're also doing a lot of things right, like presenting yourself, who you are. I often tell people now that you have to uh, really you know go big on the branding aspect and telling a story. Nobody wants to buy from a copy of Amazon or AliExpress. You really have to create your own brand and story and tell who you are, what's your message, what's your value, why people should buy from you and not someone else. And by being personal, by creating a relationship with your viewers, you're going to be converting more. Now, here's the first time where I see something might be wrong. Because up until now, it's been like sneakers and, and this image is like you see shoes and you have a lot of um, clothing maybe jeweled accessories why not even the tech is a bit weird and this stuff is definitely wrong like this has nothing to do with the rest of your website right um and drones and so this gives a real sense of random drop shipping products being added to a website and people have now developed a natural resistance when they see a drop shipping website uh, they are very cautious very fearful you could say why? I'm not saying your website is bad. I'm not saying all dropshipping websites are bad. But people have been scammed on dropshipping websites, like real storefronts that wouldn't sh ship the price at all, which is clearly illegal. Now, dropshipping is perfectly legal if you do everything right and you, you do ship the product. You can even add value on a dropshipping website and create a ton of content and guides and help people discover a product that they, that they need. So dropshipping can indeed add value to people. But you have many websites out there which ju just take a random pile of products, put them on the website and expect to get sales automatically. Uh, I don't know if that ever worked. If it did a few years ago, that definitely doesn't work anymore. People are now well more educated about dropshipping. They may have been scammed a few times. Sometimes they weren't scammed, but they, you know, they uh, purchased the product, derived like four or five weeks later. They didn't have any response from customer service. and. People are, very, are becoming very resistant and very cautious about uh, dropshipping. The, the first part of the website look great, but the second half really gives me vibe, bad vibes. So if I would see this, I would leave the website right away, like all of that. Now, reviews are okay. This again is really good. This maybe saves your website. If you didn't have this and that uh, with your story, perhaps your website wouldn't convert at all. And there are a few examples shared on these uh, subreddits where people bring thousands of people to their website and they have zero conversions. And most of the time it's because there's no brand, no story, no values, and they're not giving any reasons to people to buy from them except of someone else. So my advice to you, so that's not your case because you do, uh, you do have add to cart and, and orders, which is really good. Now, I really think you should Simplify your website, remove some of these products which give a bad vibe, like low quality products which have nothing to do with your main thing, which seems to be fashion. Um, double down on your branding, presenting who you are, give more details about why you created this shop, what makes it different. And yeah, drop all the stuff that has really nothing to do with the rest, like uh, these uh, random products. This, nowadays, people see this, they leave the website right away because they say, oh, what? What's this stuff? And, you know, they say, oh, but this stuff, I know this is coming from AliExpress and this costs like $1 and they're selling this 19 And now they're going to doubt this sneaker, which was selling for 30 or $50, which they would have been perfectly happy to buy. But now that they've seen the other product, they're wondering, okay, but okay, what's the real cost of this stuff? Is this stuff also coming from China, from a, a wholesale, a drop shipping website? Not that, I know that's not the true value. And they become very resistant, uh, resistant about everything and, and they, they might just leave the website because of that. The other question I wanted to ask you is where do you make people land on your website? Are they landing directly on the homepage? If that's the case, I made a video last week explaining why you shouldn't be doing that. You should have dedicated landing pages with 
a single product category or single best-selling product and adding a ton of value and explanations and content around that to explain why it's uh, unique, why you chose that product, what makes it special, why sh people should buy that. If you bring people on your homepage, that could be one of the reasons why there is a uh, such low add to cart rate. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you comment below, ask for more feedback, I'd be happy to do a full uh, website audit and, and review also the, the product pages, checkout process and, and all of that. SEO, page loading speed and all that. Okay, let's jump on to the next one. So, um, so this store, they're saying they're adding new shoes or designs every day. How long should I pursue this? Um, if it doesn't work. So it's been three days, you're spending $10 on marketing. So is it $10 per day or in total? Let's assume it's $10 per day and you got nine add to counts and free checkouts. If all these checkouts are coming from the ads, you're doing very, very well. This means you wouldn't have a 10% uh, conversion rate. So I'm a bit surprised by that. That would be like 10 times more than the previous website we've seen, right? Or something like that. That's, uh, no, actually, actually it's even more than that because that 1% was the add to cart rate. So no, it's even more than that. It's much, much better in your case, right? So I'm very surprised. Um, assuming again, you're spending like $30 and you have about a $1 per click. So that would mean 30 people coming to the website. So I'm very surprised. Are you adding to these people that maybe you talked about the website that directly came to it because you talked to them about it or is it purely from the ads? If it's purely from the ads, your website is working very well. <laughs> Maybe you don't know that. So that could mean you're paying too much for the ads. So you have a too high of a CPC, or it could mean that you have too low of a margin on your product. But judging from these figures alone, it looks like you're doing great. Now let's assume that's not the case. So Maybe there's a figure which is missing or something's wrong in the, the figures you presented. All these sales maybe are coming from friends and family and not from the, the ads. Um, so let's look at the website. So this is the website, be different, be unique. I like the bold statement. I think that's something important to give a flavor about what your brand is about. Uh, so we understand, so there are designers, sneakers, um, special sneakers. I like that. It's, uh, it's a shame it's uh, coming too low, right? I would love to have this statement about your brand a lot higher on the website maybe directly below the first page or as a, as a small text below the statement or directly below that before the first collection. I'd love to see that. Be careful because you do have some technical issues like this. There seems to be a missing image. That could deter people. That could give like a red flag. Like, okay, there's something wrong with the, the website. Might not be finished. Might be not working okay. I won't leave my credit card details on that because of that. You know, a lot of people have very cautious when they see tech issues like that or missing favicon or stuff like that. So it's super important to get all of that right. Okay, I think you could be telling more on the homepage, although it's pretty self-explanatory. I would love to see more about, about us, our brand, our values, our team, how we choose these sneakers. Are you making them yourselves? Or the, you know, if they drop ship, what's your process of identifying great and unique designs? I'd love to know more. I don't know if there's more information in this page. If there is, uh, this should really be in the home page. At least an excerpt or shorter version of that and you can put a button like read more about us and then that leaves here. Okay. It's super important to tell your story on the home page. Uh, one more thing I wanted to discuss is you're saying you're adding new products every day. Now that's not going to help you. Same as the first website. So my advice was actually to drop some products, remove products. I don't know where this misconception is coming from. A lot of people seem to think that the more products you have, the better you're going to do. Uh, I have no idea where this is coming from. On the contrary, I think sometimes having too many products, especially if they're different products, in your case, that might be okay. If they're all designer shoes, that'd be okay. But if people are not converting on your website, it's not because they're not finding enough shoe models, right? I think you have enough, uh, enough, uh, you know, models to 
sci-fi most tasties, right? Uh, taste. So I, I don't know if that's really going to help you. That could be a SEO strategy, right? You're trying to add more shoes, to have more content, to uh, rank uh, more pages on Google. But I tried to search for your website on Google and I don't think you're ranking a lot. And the, if you're doing that, you should add a bespoke description about each shoe, not just about the technical details, like how it's made and the materials, composition size. You should add specific content describing the design, why you like it, what it means to you, what it represents, if you're a big fan of music and art and I don't, you should add a few uh, paragraph, a few lines or one or two paragraphs about each design. It's super important. Firstly, it's going to give users more reasons to buy the product. If they learn more about the product, they're going to love it more. I made this, uh, several videos on that topic. So you'll find the links in the description. Why a product descriptions matter, why words matter still in 2022. Google advises you to use more words to describe your products so they pick up, they pick them up better. Um, and thirdly, create trust and, and uh, a relationship with your customers by adding more text. But even for Google and for ranking, for search engine optimization, SEO, it's super important to have more text to describe each product and what makes them special. So in your case, you should talk about the design and what it represents for you, why you like it. People are going to buy more because of that. Also, if adding more products is a strategy to get more ranked on Google, the problem is I don't see you on Google uh, shopping. That could be a strategy adding a ton of products to increase your chances of getting impressions and clicks from Google. But I typed your brand, I tried just typing Craftsman, I tried Craftsman Lobby, I tried Craftsman Lobby Sneaker. In no cases you were uh, showing up. So I don't know if there's a problem maybe with your Google merch, uh, Merchant Center setup or, or you just don't have enough content to be picked up. So I'd be happy to hear more. Tell me if you set up Google Merchant Center and if you can see that you're showing up on Google and is this part of your strategy? If it's not, you should focus less on adding more products in the next few days and you should focus more on your branding, your website, the design, the technical aspects, because these are going to make you lose more sales uh, than not having more products. Okay, hope this was clear. Let's move on to the next one. So someone asking for help, they launched their website two weeks ago. Um, they got a few people on the website and they only got one click. Uh, out of 260 impressions. Now that not that might not be too bad depending on the type of promotion you did and the channel. That might be okay. And actually one of the comments below said, you know, from these numbers it looks like you have a CTR. I mean, not the average CTR for ad feed is 0.22%. So with that number of impression, you wouldn't you wouldn't even know if that's enough or not to get an impression. You should have about one uh, sorry about uh, 500 impressions to um, hope having one click, right? So it's definitely not enough. Uh, you don't even know if you're doing better or worse than average with that low number of impressions. So you definitely need to spend more on ads. You said you have invested one point, say, uh, one point seven uh, uh, k, but I think that's maybe in total, right? The design, the website setup, the products. I doubt this is your marketing budget, but you should definitely invest more in marketing before making any conclusions. Um, so this is your website. Now the problem is, you know, this might be okay. You know, you're, you're selling uh, tech objects, um, tech gadgets and uh, headphones and stuff. I like the About Us here. I, I would like to see a bit more info, something a bit more personal. Um, maybe our story, an image about you, why you decided to start this. Right now it feels a bit uh, unpersonal and then the, the products I think that's super weird like you see different products we definitely we don't really have anything to do with each other you should either put here uh, different collections like headphones uh, phone uh, chargers accessories car accessories um, or you put a best seller one product uh, or you put one homogeneous category like headphones and you put different headphones but putting like 
very weird different product like that this is going to again give this vibe of a random drop sh drop shipping website most people are going to leave also the big names like that like the five lines names where everything is in the name it's very hard to read like this screams uh, this product has been uh, automatically imported from AliExpress or a similar marketplace because people only use these very long names with all these different details in the name like three in one more they're using that as a keyword stuffing strategy in the marketplaces I'm not even sure if that works in these places but on a website on a branded website it definitely doesn't work you don't want to do that this is screaming uh, uh, something's wrong you should not do that okay and then you have also different stuff so okay and and again it feels very impersonal so you do have this little text but uh, it doesn't really say anything about you what you stand for what what are your values why people should buy from you and not someone else like all this stuff uh sounds very you know usual bland i'm i'm, I'm sorry if you take this the wrong way my, my intention is really to help you i think you'd have much better results if you drop some of the products, rename them to make a product with a normal name as they are on most Shopify websites. Tell, tell us a bit more about you, how you choose products, maybe saying that you test each and every product and you only present those that are the you know, best uh, quality for money, something like that, something we know there's some added value, right? Um, but I think the biggest problem is this name, like these, these long names, that's the main problem. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So this I loved, oh, and there was one more comment I wanted to, I noticed, yeah, this one. So I fully agree with this user point and, and stare. They're saying, you know, there is no brand, so to speak. No one knows you. The, the smaller you are and the more uh, new your website is, the strongest the storytelling and the brand definition elements should be on the website. You can have a very bland website if you can afford to do that. If you're like a Walmart or Amazon, you have a very well-known brand. People come to you to buy stuff. If you're coming out as a new brand, nobody knows you, you have to make 10 times the effort these guys are making to present you, present what you stand for, how you choose your products, why you chose this product and not other products, whether you've tested them or not. You have to explain all that stuff. Um, okay, hopefully that's a helpful uh, comment. Okay, let's look at another one. I love this. So this is a dropshipping store, but I, I chose a few different examples to show you that you could have a dropshipping website, but we, which is very different, which is uh, very branded, very original. And this one, so they're saying it's a dropshipping website, but it's, you know, they're sourcing this one product locally from a local supplier and then now they're trying to dropship nationally internationally i think that's a great example of how dropshipping can add value where you know that local seller maybe doesn't even know anything about online sales e-commerce websites they're just you know doing their local products which is a uh, chili a uh, chili spice right or chili oil and this website makes a fantastic job of presenting in a very nice very appealing way this you know i love the website the design is super original and you see how they they put a big emphasis on branding i think you're doing this absolutely right this is what i'd love to see on every website and you're selling one product and you might be more successful than these other websites that are selling hundreds of products and i think if you're selling more products than one product you still have to go through that same length and that same effort of really defining your brand why you're selling this and if you can't do that for each and every product that you're having on your website it means you have too many products or they're too uh, uh, heterogeneous they're too different one from another there's no coherence cohesive whole in your website and you should drop some products drop some categories focus on one core category or one family of products which makes sense which you can explain you can tell a story about this is how you do things I love your website, it's fantastic. If I could give you a few tips, would be first to add a call to action at the bottom of the page. If someone comes here and okay, they read everything and then they're here, they're like, okay, what's next? 
Is it out yet? Is it? It's not super clear. Maybe you missed the shop now button, although it's quite big. But if you go quickly through this, you're like, okay, what's the next step? Or oh, maybe I just need my email and then I leave. No, that's too bad. You should add a call to action at the bottom of the homepage. P people can buy the product. And by the way, you should consider putting your product on this page. I think there's no reason not to put the product on the first page for a one product website. I see this very frequently in very uh, successful one product websites. They have on their homepage, they treat the homepage like a landing page, basically. And they have a ton of information introducing the brand and the product and the story. And then you can buy the product from the homepage. So we definitely like you having this product and this little more information on the homepage. I think your, your homepage is fantastic. It's great. I wouldn't remove anything from it. I would just add more information. It's quite short. You could add more information by adding the product card and the stuff. Every time you have a button and people have to move on to a different part of your website to do something, you're going to lose people in the process. You're going to lose out a ton of people because of that friction. So maybe you only have a few percent of people on this page clicking on that and, and going to the other page. And on this other page, you only have a few percent of the people actually putting the product in the cart. If you had the product on the home page, you would remove one uh, step in the process. So you would have a more frictionless experience. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this would increase your add to cart rates. Second tip, you should add a buy now button. Usually on uh, one product website, you have two buttons. You have add to cart and you have buy now. Uh, people are not very likely to you know, add to cart and then leave the page, go elsewhere on the website, add something else to the cart because it's just this one product. Add to cart is super helpful when you have uh, multiple products on the website, you want people to continue browsing with the hope that they add more products to the cart. If you have just one product on your website, you're very unlikely to, um, you know, to have that scenario happen. So you, you want to add the buy now button so people directly go to the checkout. Last tip, this FAQ is great. I don't know why you're not putting that on the product page and maybe even on the home page. If you add a product on the home page, also add the FAQ at the bottom. That would be very helpful for people to have this information. I don't know how many people go to your FAQ page. I imagine it's less than 1%. So a, a very small minority of people actually do get all this information, which is very helpful about vegan, about spiciness, uh, you know, shelf life. You need to put all that stuff where people will actually see it. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. I'll accelerate a bit from here. Uh, but again, if you want more details, if you want me to review your website in whole in more detail, please leave a comment below. I'd be happy to do so. So this website, Roommate Mop, um, they're asking uh, where they need to advertise on Facebook, TikTok, Google Ads. So I made a video about this topic last week. Uh, which was called Google versus Facebook. I will link it in the description below. And basically, I, re I, I advise you to watch this video. I answer this very question. But in short, my answer is where you run ads matters less than who you're targeting and what your ad is saying. So people should focus a lot less on the channel and a lot more on what the ads actually say. Second, there's no reason to, do, to not do all of these. You're going to be more successful targeting a narrow audience which is in need of this product and targeting that audience in all these channels, in Facebook and in TikTok and in Google, rather than targeting a broader audience in just one platform, okay? The, the, the more focused the audience is, the best it is for your marketing efficiency. I made another video about the five stages of awareness by Eugene Schwartz. It's a concept explaining that you, you, know, you have people going from different stages, from unaware, problem aware, solution aware, product aware, and most aware. And people in the most aware category are the, you know, that's the smallest category, but also the people most willing and most likely to buy. If you have a small marketing budget and even up to $1,500 per month is still a small marketing budget, you don't really have a lot of budget to educate the whole world and do mass market ads to make people go through all the stages of unaware, solution aware. You want to target people that are looking for a mop right now uh, and that want to buy a product right away. It's going to be lot, uh, a lot less expensive 
is going to work a lot better if you're targeting people that are looking for a mop rather than saying, oh, you know what? You bought you, mo you bought a, like a, a mop like a two weeks ago, but you need to change it because this one is much better. You're going to be a lot less likely if you target anyone uh, instead of just the people that need the, the mop. Um, okay, I won't give you a lot more uh, tips right now because the video is already quite long. But I would definitely advise you to add more call to actions after each category. Uh, you see, this is a good example of the one product website which has a product on the home page. So our previous website about the, the oil, the chili oil, you should definitely do that. I think that's wor that works well. And you have the FAQ you see at the bottom of the website. So that's great. I think that's a strong aspect of your website. So roommate, I don't know if you're doing well. I, I actually started working with someone recently. They're not... Uh, in the mop industry, but they have a, a similar product and they're doing really well. And I think the website is very neat. So I think you could do really well if you if you add the right people to your website. I think you could be quite successful. Okay, let's look at this one now. Um, so they're saying they have a hard time promoting that product. Um, so first thing I noticed, there's no favicon. So this little image in the top left corner of your um, tab in the browser that's that's amongst the technical issues I mentioned earlier which you have to fix if you want people to trust your website and buy from it what else I can say I love the design it's very original very unique I like it very much there is certainly a personality to this website so it shows you even if you're doing drop shipping you can be different you can show things in a, in a different way this website does not scream drop shipping, bad quality products, so beware. On the contrary, this website is actually super cool, super neat. I could see myself buying from that. The only problem is first, you're not telling as much as I would like on yourself, your brand. As I said on a few different websites before, I mean, this is a great step in the right direction. This already defines you in a certain way, but we'd love to hear more about you like how maybe you tried to find products before and all these different uh, sweaters that were all the same, they were, you know, all bland, everybody's wearing, wearing the same stuff, the same boring clothes, and, you know, clothes should be a way to express yourself and be unique and really show off your personality, something like that. And people that have the same mentality and think the same thing would feel a connection with you and would be much more likely to buy. The other thing I would tell you is add more details about the products. Maybe show a product, maybe show a few best sellers on the homepage. If, if I'm interested, if I don't click on this stuff now, you know, I like it. I don't like it just enough to actually call, go and see the collection. I'm just going to leave the website. I, I have no idea how much it costs, what are the details. I'm just going to lose out on a ton of information. I was not enticed enough to learn more about your brand, your products and you, you're not giving an opportunity to people to buy directly from the homepage. I think that's, that's a missed opportunity. Okay, let's review um, one more. So this person is saying they have made many dropshipping websites. This is a new one. Um, I don't know how successful you've been. I'd be happy if you could share some of the past success you've gone. So you're saying you have 140 people come on your website in the past few days and only one add to cart. So that's a problem. As I said before, you should have something between four and eight. So with that number of people, you should definitely get around, you know, anywhere between six and 12 people maybe uh, adding to cart. So that, that's a bit weird. Um, so this is the website. Now the problem is I think there's just not enough information and people, as I said in the beginning now, people have a third, you know, like a sixth sense for dropshipping website. They're very cautious about that. And we see that and we like, you know, you're, you're not saying a lot. I mean, you do have this stuff like high quality and that, but you're not really saying anything about yourself, how you chose the product. Have they made the difference for you? Um, Say how it made you better or happier or healed, what way it made you. Maybe you have this on your desk. Whenever you look at it, you feel calm, helps you put things in perspective. You think about the universe, how vast it is, how your problems are very tiny, helps you be happier, calmer. It's, it's a way to induce uh, 
meditation. I don't know, give, give us more reasons to buy the product. I think there's just not enough here to entice me to go and click on the product, right? Also, when you go on the product page, it's super weird. The, the, the style is very different. You're coming from this color to plain white, which is super weird. And then you have all these reviews. It's quite strange not to have some of these on the home page. That would be better maybe to add a few more reviews on the home page. Uh, again, I think you should tell more about your brand and your values, what you stand for, what are the benefits of buying this product. You see here, there's very minimal information. You see here, like, convert negative energy to positive energy. This maybe should be like a title, a highlight somewhere where you explain that. You have to explain the benefits of your products. Why should people buy them? Don't expect people to buy them just because it's pretty. Give more reasons. Maybe some people will buy it because they find it pretty, but other people, other persons will need different reasons to be convinced. For meditation, because it's visually pleasing, because it's uh, calming, because it makes you happy. What are the healing properties? Like you have to give a ton more explanations on all that stuff. Okay, and lastly, one last website. So they say they launched two weeks ago. They're not getting any sales. Um, they're wondering about, you know, how to advertise on Facebook, TikTok. Okay. So here's the website. So firstly, let me tell you that I like what you're doing. Um, again, compared to some of the other websites, there is here a cohesive uh, theme, which is the plus size um, closing. So I think that's really good. There is a uh, coherent group of products and you know the, the website theme is neat it's okay it's you know there's no big red flag it doesn't at all give this drop shipping vibe that we got uh, before on a few other websites so this is definitely a big plus so i think it means you're you know you're already doing a few things right but i think you're missing on the opportunity to tell more about your story you already have most of the work done in you know choosing products that have something about them a common theme and you're losing on the opportunity to tell a story tell how you try to shop on so many different websites you never found anything that would fit you you would find a nice dress or something but when you got to the sizes you were always so frustrated because they don't have the right size all these websites they assume we all look the same we're all super thin that's not true people are of all sizes and we should respect that right and there should be something for you i couldn't find it for me so i made a website for people like me to find products and with models that look like us with a website and a brand that speaks to people like us that respects us that think about us like if you tell that stuff and someone who is um, of a plus size watches it they're going to feel a connection to you. They're going to say, yeah, I, these guys, they understand me. And um, they have something for me. And I'm going to buy from them, right? Here, besides this tiny stuff, which is at the bottom of the website, there's no story, no information, no presentation of your team, your personal story. Like, you have to sell on branding, on values, on... Uh, on um, on the story on the team composition like you know be more personal and it's going to tremendously help you i think there's no red flag with the product or there's nothing that really feels wrong um and you know it's super clean the images are nice the descriptions are okay um you're just losing some of this uh story and if you do that and if you target the right people on advertising people that are looking for that stuff with a specific interest, specific keywords, specific websites that are targeted at plus size people, blogs that talk about the life of people who cannot find clothes where other people buy the frustration of that. If you, if you place ads in these websites, in these blogs, in these contexts, I'm pretty sure you can do a very successful website. So, okay. So for all of you that watched me today, all of these websites, uh, owners, I wish you all a ton of success. I was maybe harsh on some of these, but I wish really any and all of you to have a successful business, to have a ton of customers, to sell a ton of products, to make a lot of money, to fulfill yourself with uh, the e-commerce business. 
I hope you're getting a lot of uh, pleasure as well as uh, money from these activities. If that's not the case, I really wish to help you. We recently released our app at 360 on Shopify and it's coming out soon on WooCommerce. And uh, our goal is really to help businesses. And even if you're not ready yet to use our app or to run ads, uh, to celebrate the recent release of our app, we decided to give a ton of services for free. So we're giving free consulting calls. So these are one-to-one, one-on-one uh, -on -one private calls where we go over all aspects of your website, your Shopify settings, your analytics. We discuss your marketing strategy, your advertising setup. I can help you with uh, Google Shopping, Merchant Center, Google Ad Setup, Facebook Ad Setup, any other uh, marketing or advertising topic. And we do all of that for free. And our goal is just to get ourselves known, get our brand name out there, make you successful. Generally, there's no commitment, no strings attached. You can get the free audit, the free one-on-one -on -one consulting call. And uh, the only thing we wish is that you're successful, you grow. And once you grow and you want to accelerate your success and your growth, I hope you'll think of us to run ads all over the web, on mobile app, retargeting, hyper-local targeted ads, uh, geo-targeted ads, and many other types of ads. We have all of, ev and everything in one place to make your life simpler. If you'd like to learn more, if you want to contact me, if you want me to do a more in-depth review about your one website where I cover all aspects in details, there is a link in the description below to book a call. And it's a free call, again, no commitment, no strings attached, just book the call, we can have a conversation and I'd be happy to help you, whether it's privately or publicly with a detailed video or both. I wish you a ton of success. I wish you uh, to uh, have a wonderful uh, website, wonderful improvements, a lot of sales, and I hope we can talk soon.